Guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Karan Rathi here, the skin scientist. You all know me. <laughs> you all know me by now. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about the hot ingredient called collagen. I've been seeing so many people talk to me and tell me, but I'm taking collagen. Isn't it going to increase like my collagen in my skin? And I'm applying collagen on my face. So isn't that going to really help me? I've I found so many of these things happening. I found so many people tell me about their use of collagen as collagen powders and they're drinking that and they're hoping that their skin is going to improve or they're going to get that lifting and they're going to get anti-aging benefits. All of this does not work. It's marketing scam. It's marketing gimmicks. All right. And today I'm going to bust this myth about collagen. So first of all, what is collagen? Collagen is a protein that our skin and our body synthesizes. It creates collagen using amino acids in order to make ligaments, tendons, and, you know, various different kinds of protein structures to maintain our body. So in the skin, for example, our dermis uh, is a layer right below the epidermis. You've, of course, got the dead corneocyte layer on top. And then you have a viable epidermis below that. The viable epidermis and the corneal layer together create the epidermis. Below that is the dermis. Now, the dermis gives us structure, gives us skin structure. Dermis has collagen. It has elastin. There are certain cells called fibroblasts that create collagen. And they create these elastin molecules. And then collagen and elastin work together like a fabric to create this uh, mesh-like lattice structure within our skin to give our skin structure, to give our skin volume and to keep everything nice and tight. Okay, so all these anti-aging treatments that you tend to take are basically trying to improve this dermis layer, okay? Maybe a little bit of the epidermis layer, but primarily the dermis layer, trying to increase the collagen synthesis within the epidermis layer so that your epidermis becomes thick, your lines and wrinkles reduce and your skin looks plump, smooth, and chiseled. Now, just because your dermis has collagen doesn't mean that if you ingest collagen or that you apply collagen on your skin, that your dermis is going to all of a sudden transform into a, you know, a younger state or you know, thicker with more chisel lifted look. It's not going to happen. Taking collagen powder in the form of, you know, various flavored drinks, mixing it with water and drinking it is like, uh, you know, a bodybuilder saying that I'm going to take protein powders every day, but I'm not going to go to the gym and I'm still going to be able to build muscle. If that was the case, everybody would have just taken protein powders and built muscle. I mean, the reason muscle builds is because you stimulate muscle growth by going to the gym and doing resistance training. Resistance training is when you take weights or you take something heavy and you're trying to lift it, and you contract your muscles, and then there are fibers, they're basically protein molecules that are in the form of chains. They contract, and they sometimes break. In fact, if you've ever noticed, when you went to the gym, and you lifted weights that were beyond your uh, muscles' capability to lift, the next day you had pain. And you've heard that expression, no pain, no gain. It actually comes from gymming, because the muscle fibers actually break. And when they break, new muscle fibers are formed. Now, if your muscle fibers did not break, new muscle fibers would not have formed and you would not get muscular growth. You would not see that pumping effect. I mean, transitionally, you'll see it because, you know, blood gets pumped into the muscles. So you see a pumping effect, even if your muscle fibers are not breaking. But you're not going to see that growth over time. So basically, you've not stimulated your muscles enough to actually grow. The right amount of stimulation is only when the muscle fibers actually break, you get that pain, and then you get growth. So that's so important when it comes to gymming and growing muscles. And muscles need protein in various different forms. Now, why is it that when it comes to muscle building, we take protein? Collagen is a protein, but collagen is a specific type of protein. But when it comes to muscle building, we just use the term protein. We don't use a specific type of protein like actin or myosin that our, that our muscles are made of. Uh, that's because most people understand that proteins, when taken in the body, actually break apart into individual amino acids. Amino acids are building blocks of proteins. Imagine proteins like chains that are coiled together into this long polymer. 
and there are various amino acids that are joined together and they link and they create these proteins. Because the body breaks them apart into individual amino acids and then the body decides where it needs that amino acid. In the exact same way, when you take collagen as a supplement, whether these are collagen pills, whether these are collagen drinks, they don't, the collagen does not remain as collagen. It does not just get absorbed in your body and your bloodstream doesn't have free collagen flowing around for your skin to use. There are two things that are happening. One is stimulation to actually make collagen and the other is availability of the raw material to make collagen. Your skin creates its own collagen. You cannot ingest collagen and expect that it will go and attach to the skin. So what really happens when you take collagen in your body? When you take collagen orally, it goes into your stomach and it gets broken down. It gets broken down by the stomach acids. There's also pepsin, which is an enzyme that breaks protein molecules into smaller fragments. And thereafter, these actual fragments are either kept as just two amino acid units joined together or this whole collagen is going to break down into individual amino acids. Then your body decides based on its needs where it needs to use those amino acids and it will restructure or replace the amino acids in different permutations and combinations to create different proteins. It's not just always going to be collagen. It could be anything. It could attach it to your bones. It could attach it in your hair. It could create keratin, which your skin is made of, which your hair is made of. It could make, you know, tissues in your liver, in your kidneys, uh, in tendons, cartilage, you name it. The whole body is basically a big mass of protein walking around, you know, in different kinds of forms. So, the collagen doesn't work, all right? Uh, why is it that it's still being marketed? Because it's marketing. Everybody knows these days that you need collagen for your dermis to be thicker. And therefore, isn't it an easy marketing target? So, brands target you by writing, okay, this is collagen powder. This is collagen extracted from fish. This is collagen derived synthetically through biotechnology. Um, that's a whole different topic of how collagen is made. I don't think I'm going to get into that in this video. But the moment you take collagen, it will break down into its individual amino acids and it's no longer collagen. Your, your gut cannot transport collagen in its free form. Your blood is not going to have collagen floating around for your skin to use. All right. So get rid of this com myth completely that by taking collagen drinks or collagen powder or collagen tablets, that somehow your skin is going to improve. It's not going to happen, okay? Um, and like I already told you, just like you cannot keep taking protein and expect to build muscles and become a bodybuilder overnight for a you know, uh, bodybuilding competition, in the same way, eating or drinking collagen is not going to change anything. Now, what about if you put collagen on your skin? On your skin, in another video of mine where I talk about why hyaluronic acid is a big marketing lie, I talk about the 500 Dalton rule. On our skin, we have a rule called the 500 Dalton rule. A landmark study was done in the 2000s, which showed that any molecule that is bigger than 500 Daltons in size is not going to be able to penetrate your skin. Daltons is a unit of measure of size of a molecule. Just like we measure distance between two cities in kilometers or this table in inches or cent centimeters, we measure the size of the molecule in Daltons. It's also called the molecular weight. You can literally go online and type collagen molecular weight and you'll find that the molecular weight of collagen is 300,000 Daltons. 300,000 Daltons. In other words, 3 kilo Daltons or 500,000 Daltons or more depending on what, what type of collagen it is, collagen type 1, type 2, etc, etc. If the pore size on your skin, wherein the space between cells for any molecule to penetrate inside is only 500 Daltons, how on earth can a 500,000 Dalton size of molecule penetrate? It just cannot, okay? It's impossible. So applying collagen on your skin is not going to make it go inside your skin, all right? Collagen being a protein is going to be slightly sticky the moment you dissolve it in water. So it might create a layer on top of your skin on the surface that makes it look sticky. And that's going to make it look as if your skin is smoother or, you know, it's plumpier, but it's not. And it's not going to remain in that form. In fact, it's going to dry up. Have you ever seen those masks? those white magic masks that you put in your face and people spray water on top and it just dissolves and that looks phenomenal.
to look at, but in reality is just dried collagen. You spray it with water, it dissolves in the water, and then it sits on your surface of the skin. It doesn't really go inside. It appears as if it's going inside because it's disappearing. It's only disappearing because it's getting dissolved in the water that's being sprayed on top or that's being poured on top. It's not really going anywhere. It's just sitting on your surface. You let that person sit out there for some more time, and as the water on that surface evaporates, they're again going to get that whitish film. Um, it's not going to be 100% white because it's now stuck to your surface. So it's going to appear maybe in a slightly different way, maybe a little cloudy, but it's not really gone anywhere. So a huge molecule like collagen just cannot penetrate your skin. So again, that's a big myth. It's a big marketing lie. Don't fall for it just because you applied it. Now, some brands are going to claim or some people are going to claim that, look, I'm using hydrolyzed collagen. Hydrolyzed collagen is basically collagen that has been broken down into smaller units. Even if you hydrolyze collagen and you break it down into smaller units, first of all, it's not collagen. Now it's become collagen peptides, which are smaller chains of amino acids. It still has multiple amino acids joined together. But the size of that smaller collagen peptide is still going to be above 500 Daltons in size. So again, it's very difficult to penetrate. And there's one more thing which is super important for you to understand. It's the hydrophilicity or the, the friendliness towards water. That's what hydrophilicity means, the attraction towards water. Collagen is a hydrophilic molecule, which means it dissolves in water. It's friendly to water. The skin doesn't allow hydrophilic molecules to enter as well as it allows lipophilic molecules to enter, which means molecules that can dissolve in oil. Well, in order to explain that to you, you have the dead layer on top. The dead layer is composed of dead cells. Those are like bricks. Then they join together through corneodesmosomes, which hold them in place. And then you have the cement, which are the lipids. The lipids contain free acids. It contains ceramides, cholesterol. And this forms the skin's natural barrier. It's this barrier that prevents everything from going inside. Now, because the cement is oily in nature, the sebum that we secrete, you know, our skin secretes sebum and becomes oily. When you apply a water-soluble ingredient, even if you apply water on top, it's just going to flow off. Water cannot mix with oil. So a water-soluble molecule like collagen, even if it has been broken down into small amino acids, it's not going to penetrate your skin. Um, and even if it does, it's going to remain on the surface. It's not really going to go deep inside your skin. Your skin is not crazy. It knows how to work. It's now just going to allow something just to come inside and you know, become part of your skin cells. And, and let's say theoretically, even if you were able to do that, let's say you were able to inject it, you still have to send it into your dermis. But the natural barrier is only going to allow it to go, if at all, into your epidermis. It's just not going to travel into your dermis. But forget all of that because I already mentioned, regardless of whether it's a full molecule of collagen or it's broken down into small pieces, it's still too large to enter. So don't fall for all of these tricks. Um, if you want your collagen to increase naturally, if you want your dermis uh, to be thicker, then there are various other procedures that can be done in aesthetic clinics. There are non-invasive procedures as well. Um, then there are molecules that do that. For example, retinol is known to increase collagen thickness. But just because I said retinol doesn't mean you go ahead and start applying retinol or using retinol products because the next video that I'm going to make is going to be on retinol and the dangers of retinol. And you really, really need to see that before you start using retinol. In Okay, I'm, I'm actually really not going to go into that because it's such a large topic. So you'll have to wait and see my next video on that. But yes, there are ways to increase collagen thickness by using molecules. Certain molecules that are safe as well can be used. But more or less, most topical products cannot really give you that kind of collagen thickness, all right? There are other ways, um, and I'm going to get into that in my next video of how you can increase collagen thickness in your dermis naturally through topical products or through procedures. But I've already mentioned, if you're able to show your skin to a dermatologist and you have premature aging, let's say you're above 35, you're starting to see lines and wrinkles, you're starting to see loose skin, then there are ways that... There are techniques that can be done to help bring that collagen thickness back and the dermal thickness back. 
but orally supplementing with anything or applying something on the skin is not going to create that much of a difference except with the retinols but then retinols have a lot of side effects there there are a lot of other issues with with the retinols which i really want you to know so we're going to park that topic for the next video now that you know better make better decisions when it comes to collagen you really want to comment down there in the comment section about questions you have on collagen or anything else you want to ask me definitely hit that subscribe button because i'm revealing the secrets of the industry i'm really busting myths about skincare and marketing being a skin scientist being somebody who is a dermatologist specializing in skin regeneration hair biology and an entrepreneur having started so many uh performance beauty brands with our brand that is being prescribed by dermatologists and the top dermatologists in the country i think i know a little bit more about when it comes to skin science and the truth behind everything that's been told to you so hit that subscribe button and hit that like button if you like this video so that you and other people who would be benefited by this video can actually see it and share this with your friends and family who are into collagen supplements i'm kanrati bye